Spartanburg's rich history weaves together periods of economic success and bouts of economic decline. And as we together navigate the most recent speed bump, it's important to remember that like the Montgomery Building, Spartanburg is in the middle of a resurgence. Spartanburg, good afternoon. I'm Alan Smith, President and CEO of the Spartanburg Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to reveal our 101st annual celebration. This year, in partnership with Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System, we come together virtually with the community's health front of mind. And we hope you'll stay along for the journey as we celebrate Spartanburg's accomplishments. We recognize our community's leading businesses and brightest stars, and we reveal a special and historic announcement about the future of our organization and its impact on Spartanburg. Whether it's navigating a pandemic, providing community leadership, or fueling our local business, tourism, and economic development initiatives, Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System has an undeniable impact on our community. We'd like to start by saying thank you to Spartanburg Regional for its unrivaled support. As we all know, it's been an incredibly challenging year for all of us, both in our community and at our healthcare system. COVID-19 has changed the way that we live our lives, changed the way we interact with one another, changed the way our businesses operate. We will get through this. It will take your help. On behalf of the nearly 10,000 associates of Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System, we want to thank all of you who are doing your part to help prevent the spread of this disease. Continue to do the things that you can. Wash your hands, socially distance, and most importantly, please wear a mask. We know these things make a difference. Despite being unable to come together in person like in years past, Spartanburg's business community is committed to make this virtual celebration possible. Our live stream sponsor, Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, has remained committed to the health and well-being of its members as our state deals with COVID-19. To better serve customers across South Carolina, Blue Cross Blue Shield expanded its telehealth operations, giving more people easier access to critical information from medical professionals. Blue Cross Blue Shield also waived out-of-pocket costs related to COVID-19 for several months, and they are still working diligently to help slow the spread of COVID-19 through extensive education and prevention efforts. Thank you to our platinum sponsors, Duke Energy Carolinas, Spartanburg Herald Journal, and our gold sponsors, BMW Manufacturing Company, McMillan Paz and Smith Architecture, and United Community Bank, and our silver sponsors, AFL, Coldwell Banker Kane Real Estate, Contact, Corporate Center, Denny's, Founders Federal Credit Union, Gosnell Menard Robinson Infante CPAs PA, Greenville Spartanburg International Airport, Harper General Contractors, J.M. Smith Foundation, MB Con, Hart National Bank, Piedmont Natural Gas, Purpose Financial, Spartanburg Community College, Spartanburg Water, and WSPA Channel 7 WYCW Nexstar Media Group. We could not do what we do without your support. One of the professions facing the greatest unknown right now is education. It's also the greatest profession to the future of our economy. The work teachers do every day is critical and whether it's online or in the classroom, Spartanburg's teachers are playing an important role in developing our talent pool. In partnership with USC Upstate, we say thank you to all Spartanburg's educators and shine a spotlight on teachers from public and private schools across Spartanburg County who have been recognized by their district or school as a Teacher of the Year. District 1, Katie Darby, Inman Elementary School. 
District 2, Emily Wilkins, Chesney Elementary School. District 3, Melanie Cecil, Cannons Elementary School. District 4, Ashley Bennett, Woodruff Middle School. District 5, Carrie Potter, Lyman Elementary. District 6, Allie Thrower, Jesse Bobo Elementary School. District 7, Crystal Weathers, E.P. Todd Elementary School. South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind, Julia Wischen Price. Spartanburg Day School, Paige Phillips. High Point Academy, Elementary, Melissa Brown. Middle School, Heidi Boyd. High School, Andrew Green. Spartanburg Prep, Lauren Mason. Thank you for the critical work you do each and every day. The first awardee to join us live today is a champion for Spartanburg. He is receiving not one, but two awards. Commercial Lending Specialist with BB&T, now Truist Financial, Cal Wicker has proven his dedication to Spartanburg, bringing the best barbecue to the Berg as the founder of Hub City Hogfest. Both Spartanburg Young Professionals and the Leadership Spartanburg Alumni Association have benefited from Cal's leadership. You could argue Spartanburg has benefited from his leadership. The Young Professional of the Year Award, sponsored by Park National Bank, and the Leadership Spartanburg Alumnus of the Year Award recognized an individual with outstanding leadership and service to our community. Cal, why is being involved in Spartanburg so important to you? Well, Spartanburg is my hometown. I met my wife here, my family's here, great friends here, so it's obviously a very important place to me. And I'm, I'm excited to see the progress that's happening and excited to be a part of the progress going forward to, kind of get Spartanburg to that next level and it's a, an exciting time to be here. And uh, secondly, Spartanburg has done so much for me. I, I, countless people through the years have kind of helped me get to where I am now. So I'd like to be able to give back a little bit of what everyone's given me. So I, I'm excited to be here. Very thrilled to have won this award and thank you very much. Cal, congratulations. We're fortunate to have leaders like you taking the reins. Dedication is key to success and our next awardee has proven extraordinarily dedicated through difficult times. 2020 brought a tornado to the heart of Spartanburg, and now the pandemic has significantly challenged our hospitality industry. Pontiola and Paul Abernathy, owners of Cleedale Historic Inn and Gardens, forged on through property damage and canceled travel plans. In fact, they just celebrated the addition of a unique offering, a historic 1947 Southern Rail Mack Rail caboose car that has been outfitted as a modern bedroom suite. The inn combines Pontiola's college dream to own a bed and breakfast with the couple's love of history, bringing unrivaled homegrown hospitality to Spartanburg's tourism scene we are proud to recognize Clevedale Historic Inn and Gardens as Minority Owned Business of the Year presented by Milliken and Company. Pontiola, what have the past six months taught you about resilience? Resilience to us is like a call to action. You reassess your business, your goals, you reaffirm your faith, um, because that's what keeps you going as an owner. Um, you rejuvenate um, your business by being creative and coming up with out-of-the-box kinds of ideas that keep you in business. And one of the things that, that difficult times do, your vision can either evaporate, fade away, be destroyed, 
or it can be re-realized, reaffirmed, concretized, deepened, and that's what's happened to us. Clevedale Historic Inn and Gardens has always been a place where history and hospitality meet, and we are clearer about that than we have ever been. And also, I think the final uh, key is, would be collaboration with other businesses because we're all going through the same thing. And so it makes sense to collaborate, to do some things together, and be a support to one another. Congratulations, Pontheola and Paul, for this well-earned recognition. Named for a longtime Spartanburg Chamber employee and founder of the Small Business Council, the prestigious James B. Thompson Small Business of the Year is awarded to Spartanburg small businesses that display staying power, growth, innovation and a commitment to better our community. Sponsored by Truist Financial, formerly SunTrust Bank and bb and Bank, the Small Business of the Year is chosen from a group of Small Business Success awardees. This year's awardee has boosted community pride in the Berg while helping other small businesses look their best. Now, Arrowhead Design Company has taken its vision national. Here with me is owner Lainey Whitaker. Lainey, how did you start Arrowhead? I started this company long before I was in Spartanburg. I grew up here, but I left for my first two jobs. I was with a tech startup in New Jersey for my first job, and that was a lot of the web design related things that I now use today um, at Arrowhead. And then I left there and worked for a publication company in the Outer Banks that uh, was a lot of print and promotional type of things. And um, after I left those two places, I was like, you know, I've got both sides down now, you know, what, what better way to showcase that than to come back to Spartanburg where I'm from. So um, when I got back here, I saw the, the amazing growth that was going on and I was like, you know, businesses need this branding, they need this marketing, they need to show off um, themselves and Spartanburg. What is it meant for you to see your products and your symbols take off as a source of community pride? Well it comes kind of you know full circle it's like our services are the branding the the social media the website design and all that um, but it really showcases our services that we can brand our our own community you know so um, when we see the Berg Hats, uh, whether we're at Lowe's, we're at a local restaurant, it doesn't matter. When we see our stuff around, it just, you know, every now and then it's just a you know, a hit in your face. It's like, oh my gosh, like, it's maybe Spartanburg, which is small, but it's, it's impacting a lot further than that. Why do you think people have gravitated to the Berg brand? It's a combination of a few things. I think it's because we're this young company, a bunch of 20 year olds in Spartanburg, or all of us are in our 20s, I guess I should say, and we just have fun with it. So um, Jamie Woodruff, my business partner, runs the whole retail side, and I think she's got a good personality behind this. And um, when you see the two of us go out places and just be really um, excited about what we're doing, I think people latch on to that a little bit, just how excited we are for, for Spartanburg, and you know, we're the younger generation. So um, I think there's some of that, and then uh, another part of it is just Spartanburg in general. Spartanburg is uh, a crazy place to be right now in a good way. And uh, when someone comes here, they want to come back. And when someone lives here, they want to show it off. What's next for Arrowhead Design? Oh, that's my favorite question. And it's my favorite question uh, because there's always something next for Arrowhead, I feel like. Uh, we are not going anywhere. You know, through, through COVID, through anything, we're sticking around. And uh, the biggest thing right now is that we've switched locations. So we were um, at Kennedy Street beside the New Way, and now we're a few doors down from Willie Taco on Main Street. Our Berg brand is going national, so um, when I say that, we're gonna start it really slow. It's not gonna hit all at once, but you will start seeing us pop up um, a lot of uh, design-related things towards other, other Bergs. But, but again, you'll know where it came from. The, the other thing is uh, Ima Ortega. He is our new director of media production. Um, we've always done the social media branding and websites, like I've said before, but now we're adding video to it. So um, not only can these businesses get a new website with a new logo at the top, new content to, to market to people, but they're also going to get these awesome videos to really showcase that. When it comes to engaging small businesses in Spartanburg, no one does it better than our ambassadors. 
Eric Cook, Branch Manager with Job Impulse, educates businesses on helpful tools and initiatives and helps celebrate milestones. For his drive to connect local businesses into networks of success, we are proud to recognize Eric Cook as the CentOS Ambassador of the Year. Eric, what does it mean to be a Chamber Ambassador? It lit a match in me and wanting to do more for uh, Spartanburg County. And being an ambassador opened my eyes and allowed me to do more. And, um, and it exposed me to businesses and the way that, uh, in a way that I become more personable with these businesses and to learn more about um, how these businesses affect the city of Spartanburg. It means a whole lot to uh, give back. Um, it's very important to uh, establish a good relationship with your community leaders and as well as your, uh, your work colleagues. And um, it's, it's just very important to, I feel, it's very important to give it your all in connecting uh, businesses and connecting people together. Because um, if the people grow, the community will grow. And that's the way I look at it. I am honored to receive this uh, award and to serve the uh, city of Spartanburg, um, the chamber, and you, the people, and the community of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Thank you. Just as we work to help Spartanburg's small businesses succeed, we work to help Spartanburg's people succeed. Racial inequities are a daily reality for millions of people across the United States. And recent acts of violence against black people exacerbated by an inequitable global health pandemic have brought them to the forefront of our nation's consciousness. It is time to build an economically inclusive environment in which all of Spartanburg's people have opportunity to thrive. Spartanburg's black and Hispanic populations earn less, own fewer businesses, and are two to three times more likely to struggle with the grips of systemic poverty. These economic disparities are unacceptable and call us to action. This year, with the help of our DEI Champions and Inclusion Council, we strengthen our diversity and economic inclusion efforts by funding the creation and implementation of a DEI strategic plan. On August 1st, former Spartanburg School District 7 Superintendent Dr. Russell Booker began his role as diversity and economic inclusion consultant for our organization, where he will drive bold outcomes both within our organization and within our entire county. When it comes to economic inclusion, we stand beside community advocates who work to create equity and fair representation. Dr. Araceli Hernandez LaRoche, Assistant Chair of the Department of Language, Literature, and Composition at USC Upstate, is one of Spartanburg's strongest advocates. Through her service to the Spartanburg Hispanic Alliance, Chapman Cultural Center, Hub City Writers Project, and our own Inclusion Council, Araceli's efforts make local and statewide impact. We are thrilled to recognize Araceli as the 2020 Inclusion Advocate of the Year, sponsored by Milliken. Araceli, what drives you to keep doing the work that you do so well? Well, I see that a lot of times um, there could be room for more board diversity, uh, and that drives me to work with um, young people, to work with different people in the community, to uh, develop and foster more uh, leadership opportunities and that is what drives me. It drives me also to speak up for more inclusion, uh, whether that be at the board table, uh, in my sector, which is higher ed. Uh, and I just see so much possibilities, so much potential, but we do need to see more and more people um, reflected in uh, leadership positions. I'm very honored uh, with this award. This award motivates me uh, to speak up for more inclusion. And this is a very vibrant community. 
uh, that does so much for our young people. Uh, it's a college town and I think that we need to continue to open doors of opportunity for all. Araceli, thank you for all you do for all people throughout Spartanburg County. In April, the city of Spartanburg experienced peaceful protests in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. The city's police department walked beside protesters proving time and again that leadership embraces community. The Leadership Spartanburg Alumni Association's Unsung Hero Award recognizes an alum who goes above and beyond. This year's recipient, Chief Alonzo Thompson, takes great responsibility to enact initiatives that build community trust. After all, policing is a partnership. Many of you saw the Facebook video of Chief Thompson standing in the middle of an intersection, urging protesters to continue using their voices to enact change. That kind of distinguished, authentic leadership can be seen as Spartanburg Police welcome students to school on High Five Fridays and work with programs like My Brother's Keeper to connect with Spartanburg's residents. Chief Thompson, you've had a lot of proud moments, but what would you call your proudest moment? My most proud moment is showing up every day working with the men and women of the Spartanburg Police Department. Um, they go out each and every day and try to do things the right way, at the right time, and for the right reasons. Despite the attack on law enforcement seemingly across our country, we still show up here every day to try to enhance the uh, safety in our community and improve quality of life. So that's my most proud moment. We don't do this for the, the praise or the recognition uh, necessarily. We do it because it's the right thing to do. Uh, we're public servants, we have servants' hearts, and to go out and try to improve the quality of life for those that live, work, and play in our community and provide public safety, that's, that's who we are and that's what we do. On behalf of the men and women of the Spartanburg Police Department, I want to thank all those at the Chamber for giving us this tremendous award. We're extremely proud and humbled by the presentation. Thank you, Chief Thompson. Spartanburg's incredibly blessed to have you. The Elaine Harris Tourism Person of the Year Award, sponsored by Allegra, recognizes an individual who exemplifies the vision of former Pacolet Mayor Elaine Harris, who developed promoted and implemented a sustainable tourism culture right here in Spartanburg County. Pinnacle Hospitality's owner, Sam Schombach, has made tremendous investments in Spartanburg's tourism economy over the past year alone, introducing True Hotel, 1881 Event Center, and Heirloom Eatery. Here on behalf of his father, Sam, Sashin Schombach joins me. Our community is and has been evolving and, and you've seen it all. What's your perspective on the way our tourism amenities have improved or, or changed over the past few years? So I'm born and raised in Spartanburg and you know at the time there wasn't many lodging options. You know um, what we had noticed is that uh, that for Spartanburg to continue to grow it needed more hospitality locations so it needed more hotel rooms and restaurants and they needed to be dynamic and diversified. And so we've continued to reinvest in Spartanburg. Um, along the way, we've found ourselves to a place where Pinnacle Hospitality owns and manages the majority of guest rooms in the area. And we see that as pretty much a statement on our confidence in the, the community and more importantly the leadership here locally. And so what role do you think Pinnacle and, and its properties have, have played in that evolution and the continual improvement of this destination? I feel like for us we look at hospitality as playing a critical role in the growth. Whether it's the leisure traveler that gets the first opportunity to see Spartanburg for the first time, eat at the restaurants and learn about the textile mill roots or it's the corporate partner that's looking to relocate their headquarters to the area. We know that part of Spartanburg's growth is predicated on the hospitality segment being in step with them. And so put yourself in the place of a visitor coming to our community. What would you want that visitor to take away if they were perhaps staying at one of your properties or eating at 1881? For us, you know, one thing that's like a hallmark of our properties is service, namely. Hospitality and service go hand in hand. And so we certainly want them to walk away knowing that they just received excellent service. 
But on and above that, they, we want them to remember that they're in Spartanburg. So whether that's highlighted through local art, whether it's through murals, local food, snacks from Dottie's, mm. it's, uh, it's about giving them a unique local experience. The Duke Energy Citizenship and Service Award honors individuals who act as a catalyst for others to become involved in civic and social activities. This year, the award goes to three recipients who serve the citizens of Spartanburg. Two in the General Assembly now, one formerly in the General Assembly, but now in higher education. Representatives Durham Cole, Eddie Town, and Mike Forrester recently retired from the South Carolina State House, leaving a legacy of business-friendly legislation. Each recipient consistently scored over 90% on the Chamber's legislative scorecard. That means they voted for jobs, they voted for economic growth, and for the families of Spartanburg County. What's been your greatest accomplishment on behalf of the Spartanburg business community? Alan, I would say it was the legislation that I introduced in 2017 that was the uh, nuisance lawsuit bill, and it protects business and manufacturing from, from lawsuits, nuisance lawsuits, from when they build a facility and invest in our community, and then to have someone move next door and complain about the lights or, or what have you, their hours of operation. So we're, we're sending a message from South Carolina that invest in our state, invest in our community, and we'll protect your investment. My greatest accomplishment is not just one piece of legislation. We all worked on the legislation that Mike and Durham and others put in, but my greatest accomplishment was getting myself in a position of leadership so I could be there when we developed the program and, 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 and set the business agenda that we set for the House Republican Caucus. And we were very successful in that. And, and, and that's why we have a good business development, we have good business uh, bills being passed out of the House is because of the leadership and the thought that they put in for the business of development. And I think that's the greatest thing that I was able to do for Spartanburg County was to be able to be a part of that. It was a tremendous honor to represent uh, my friends and neighbors in Spartanburg County in the House. Um, I grew up in Spartanburg and so I'm just thrilled to see uh, the de development and success that, that we've seen in Spartanburg over the past decade and more. And one of my goals as a legislator was to be responsive to my constituents, and that includes the entrepreneurs whose passion and creativity have created uh, countless jobs and opportunities in Spartanburg. And that responsiveness led to things like leading on tax credit initiatives, which uh, supported the redevelopment of uh, the Montgomery Building where we're standing, uh, Drayton Mills, and also the removal of outdated laws that allowed uh, entrepreneurs like RJ Rockers and other breweries that have started in recent years to, to succeed and grow their businesses the way they see fit and create jobs for themselves and their families and their employees. So uh, my goal was just to, to try to be responsive and support those who were creating jobs and opportunities in Spartanburg. I'd just like to say thank you for allowing me to serve and certainly appreciate this award. It's much appreciated and I'm honored. I'd like to just thank you for this honor. I'm honored and humbled to receive it. Thank Duke Power, Duke Energy, and the Chamber for this. This is mighty nice. A great way to end up a career in the legislature, so thank you very much. I want to thank Duke Energy and the Spartanburg Chamber for this award. I'm humbled and grateful to receive it and it was an honor to serve my friends and neighbors in the South Carolina House. Thanks to each of you for your service. Economic development continues to be Spartanburg's bread and butter with more than 354 million dollars in development coming into our county last year. That capped off an incredible decade that saw more than six billion dollars invested creating nearly 15,000 jobs across Spartanburg County. The Economic Futures Award sponsored by Wells Fargo is presented to a business providing significant contributions to the economic vitality of our community. This award celebrates innovation, economic promise, and economic development leadership. Contact Inc. Our Economic Futures Group Award recipient was one of the first companies in Spartanburg to pivot and respond to COVID-19. 
Avi, if you could tell us a little about what Contec does. So Contec is a manufacturer of contamination control products. Um, and what that means is we make products from dry wipes to pre-saturated wipes, mopping systems, disinfectants, and we service uh, multiple industries. Um, our industries include our clean room business unit, which is life sciences, pharmaceuticals, microelectronics. Uh, we have a surface prep uh, business unit, which is automotive and aerospace. Um, our healthcare business unit, which is compounding pharmacies, where they're compounding drugs prior to uh, infusion to, into the human body. And then our newest business unit is a professional business unit, which is uh, focused on cleaning hospital rooms as well as building, uh, you know, universities, colleges, um, and that's our, our newest business unit. So we're really looking at at, at all aspects of, of cleaning, um, critical cleaning in, in in various settings. So tell us what went into the decision to really pivot and respond to the pandemic so quickly. As, as you look at what the definition of, it is, of essential manufacturers, we were considered essential because we were supporting um, manufacturers of vaccines, manufacturers of, of, of healthcare products. Um, we were supporting hospital units, and so it was it was our effort to say we're going to stay open on a worldwide basis. And so in order to do that, um, we looked at a number of things that we needed to do, a number of changes that we needed to make within our organization. We started making masks for our employees um, pretty much immediately. We had the ability to do that. Um, they were, uh, each, each employee was in, uh, issued two masks uh, that they could reuse and, and work in the workplace. Uh, we instituted some social distancing, whether it be on the floor, we moved uh, converted conference rooms into cafeterias to ensure that people had enough space to s separate out and be separated for uh, for make, making sure that we didn't have any uh, any any instances of, of people not social distancing. Um, and so we did everything we could to continue running our facilities, um, running, keeping our employees health, healthy and safe during that time, but ensuring that our end use customers um, had the product they needed to be able to continue operating and running. So um, we went through a whole lot of challenges, even with raw materials, with, with, with being able to continue supporting that, but we had not shut down during the, during the pandemic and we continue operating today. You know, and it's always felt like Contact and Spartanburg just fit. Tell us about that fit. Contact was founded by uh, Jack McBride and Jib Smith almost 30 years ago here, here in Spartanburg. Um, and Spartanburg has been the home for Contact for, for, for that entire period of time. Um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a great fit because Spartanburg's strong manufacturing base uh, kind of fit where, where we were trying to go as a manufacturing company. Uh, it's been a great spot for us being, being close to Charleston. We, we do a lot of international business, both uh, with shipping product out overseas as well as receiving raw materials in. So that's been a great spot to be at, to be close to a port. Um, and as, you know, as we continue growing and expanding, um, just the availability of commercial space has been has been a real blessing for us. So Spartanburg is a natural fit. We are committed to this community and committed to being here. Committed to the community, there's no doubting that. So tell us why that's important to you. One of the things that we, we really do strive to do is to continue creating jobs in Spartanburg. We think that's important and that's one way that we can contribute to this to the Spartanburg economy is to continue being able to create jobs, both um, manufacturing jobs, uh, you know, white collar jobs, uh, supply chain jobs. So we're committed to that, committed to continuing to, to grow. Um, you know, we're up to just shy of 800 employees worldwide and our goal is to continue continue growing within within Spartanburg. Um, and so that's, that's first and foremost. Uh, and then we support our community in multiple ways. You know, if we look at uh, all our employees within the organization, several of them sit on local boards. Um, they continue to give back to the community by serving on it. We do a lot of work with United Way, with Habitat for Humanity. And, um, and pretty much most most nonprofit organizations within Spartanburg we're involved in in some form or fashion. So we will continue to do that and continue to support those. They're important to this community and important to what we do. The work undertaken by Contact continues to reach beyond their walls, exemplifying the corporate social responsibility needed to navigate COVID-19. Not all businesses weathered the storm as well as contact. Spartanburg's Bringing Back the Bird Business Recovery Task Force was born to help Spartanburg businesses recover from economic damage. Wes Lair, chair of the Chamber's executive board, played a key role and continues to play a key role in our response. And while I have Wes here with me, I just want to say 
I have always had the right chair at the right time, and this time has been no exception. Wes, thank you for your leadership, your guidance, and your ear throughout these difficult times. Thank you, Alan. Since the launch of Bringing Back the Berg, we've had some significant accomplishments. More than 180 businesses have committed to combat COVID-19 by signing onto a list of standards to help protect their business and Spartanburg. Next is a partnership with Luxor Scientific, which will provide Spartanburg businesses with fast access accesses to tests, results, allowing operations to continue while keeping health at the forefront. Last but certainly not least, the Bringing Back the Berg Small Business Fund has raised almost $700,000 in contributions to support small businesses, especially those serving low and moderate income areas. More is needed and we urge you to donate at bringingbacktheburg.com. Our Chairman's Award is sponsored by Ogletree Deacons and is presented this year to two leaders whose tireless efforts will impact our community for years to come. Spartanburg County Councilman David Britt and J.W. Woodward Funeral Homeowner Kay Woodward stepped up to serve Spartanburg in the midst of unprecedented times. As co-chairs of Bringing Back the Berg Recovery Task Force, David and Kay have ushered in initiatives to ensure Spartanburg continues to grow stronger. David and Kay, in your role as co-chairs, what has been of most significant impact to you? I think probably the most important impact has been how 34 people have just said, let me help bring back the golden goose and bring back the berg. From my co-chairman, you know, Kay Woodward, uh, to the other 33 participants saying, what do we need to do to help small businesses, medium business, businesses, and large business just get back to helping Spartanburg be where we were back in February? And that goes from the smallest business like Duffy Bears, Bare Feet, to Avi Lawrence with Contact, to one of the largest companies in Spartanburg, Millican, with Halsey Cook, all being a part of this and being contributing partners. And we've seen immediate results uh, in these last four months. You know, we're way ahead of where our metrics are projecting we might be, but that's because of the, I think, the one Spartanburg attitude and the community spirit. Um, we want all people to enjoy hope and opportunity, and that's what comes from the golden goose that we call business and industry. The collaboration has been so important in terms of opening the bird back up. Um, the unparalleled leadership of Alan Smith and the executive team with the chamber in combination with community leaders uh, bringing their expertise. It's, it's been an exciting collaborative effort focusing on metrics, um, looking at benchmarks. It's been a focus of bringing back business safely. I think the thing that really jumps out to me is not about money, about when you think about business, it's not about these companies making money, it's about the, the hope and opportunity they give to the employees and their customers. You know, it is a symbiotic relationship that it all works together and I've seen it again in Spartanburg like I think nowhere else. People want to copy what we have, but um, that partnership and that feeling of we're in this together, let's get through it and let's be better than we were even in February. On behalf of the Business Task Force, I accept this award and I really thank you for it. I thank you and this is received because of the collaboration. David K., thank you for your leadership and your friendship. The Neville Holcomb Distinguished Citizenship Award presented by Spencer Hines Properties is the highest honor this organization can bestow on a community leader or leaders. Named after the dynamic and beloved former mayor of Spartanburg, the Neville Holcomb Award has been presented annually since 1984. This year's recipients have been on the front lines serving Spartanburg in the most selfless way. Waking up every single day and facing exposure while many of us have been staying safely at home. In 2020, healthcare workers became healthcare heroes, displaying resilience, collaboration, and compassion 
dining personal protective equipment, frontline healthcare workers provide care to all patients, including those battling COVID-19. Working long hours under stressful circumstances, they comfort hospital system patients who are isolated from family and friends, stepping in to provide emotional support, connecting families via video chat, delivering care packages, and updating loved ones. At Physician Practices, doctors and nurses have conducted more than 29,000 video visits since March, tending to the health of patients who remain safely at home. This year's Neville Holcomb Distinguished Citizenship Award goes to Spartanburg's frontline healthcare heroes. Representing Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System and all healthcare workers throughout the upstate is Takesha Foster. Being on the front lines battling COVID-19, how has your job changed? It has changed significantly. Um, we are the patient's family now. The families are not able to visit COVID-19 patients, so we have to be that listening ear. We have to be their family. Um, we have to hold their hand. Um, through troubling times. And why has it been so important for you all to also provide emotional support during a situation like this? They don't have anyone. Like I said, we are their family. We are their family members. Um, we can FaceTime their family members via FaceTime, but if that family member wants me to hold the patient's hand, we hold their hand while they're talking to their family member. Um, we listen, talk to them about their concerns, their, you know, their fears about COVID-19. We are that person for them, the only person at times. Why has it been so important to have such a high level of community outreach? We just wanna make sure that everyone is wearing their masks, staying socially distanced. This is important because we see the patients as they come in. As you can see here, we're socially distanced um, without wearing masks, but staying six feet apart is key. Um, we try to make sure that as family members come into the hospital um, that are visiting non-COVID patients that they also are aware to wear their mask, wash their hands for 20 seconds, and sanitize frequently. And what was it like experiencing and feeling those shows of support from the Spartanburg community? It makes us feel awesome. A lot of times, you know, we do our work in, in not in silence, but without recognition. So to see the community show us recognition where, with the fire, you know, the firefighters, the police, um, people from churches making masks, that feel awesome um, to receive that support from the Spartanburg community. So what's something that people might not know about Spartanburg Regional's approach to this pandemic? I feel that Spartanburg Regional has done an awesome job at acclimating supplies, PPE. Um, when we first started back in March, um, we had coaches that were watching us to make sure that we were donning and doffing appropriately. So that made me feel safer in knowing that I was doing the right thing to protect me and my family and the community. So what is this entire experience taught you as a healthcare professional? has taught me that we are important. We are important in the system, the community. It has taught me that um, the community needs us to keep them educated on you know, staying safe, sanitizing, washing hands, even before the pandemic and after the pandemic is over, we will still need to keep with the community outreach. So you now have the opportunity through this video to speak to the people of Spartanburg and you are on the front lines. What would you tell them that they can do to help you? What you can do to help us is to stay socially distanced, wear your mask, teach your children to wear their masks because they are going back to school. Um, they will need to sanitize frequently. I have taught my children to wear their mask and sanitize as well. Um, when you wash your hands, wash for at least 20 seconds um, to make sure you're getting all the germs off. Um, if you're coughing, cough into your elbow. Um, that's basically it. It's very simple to stay safe and help your community. On behalf of Spencer Hines Properties, we thank Spartanburg's frontline healthcare heroes, and we congratulate all those who have received awards today. Your leadership and service to Spartanburg County are what keeps us moving forward. We raise our glasses to honor you. Cheers. Like the Montgomery Building, Spartanburg's economic revival is hard to miss. Our business base and housing markets continue to grow with 846 building permits issued in June alone in Spartanburg County 
and close to 1,500 multifamily residential units under construction or in the pipeline in the city of Spartanburg. That's all following a decade that attracted $6.8 billion in economic development to our county. Spartanburg recently saw more project requests in the first two quarters of 2020 than the same time frame in 2019. And we are becoming a sports tourism hub as a repeat host of the USA Softball Junior Olympic Cup and a first time host of the NCAA Division II Cross Country Regional Championships. In most communities throughout the nation, there is a Chamber of Commerce, an Economic Development Organization, and a Convention and Visitors Bureau that leads this work. True to Spartanburg's collaborative spirit, we're lucky to have all three organizations under one roof. Our model has opened doors and generated ideas that would not have been realized anywhere else. One year ago, we began an internal process to take our collaboration to the next level. Today, we reveal an organizational change designed to drive Spartanburg's development evolution. One Spartanburg Inc. creates a unique competitive advantage, merging the work of the Spartanburg Area Chamber of Commerce, the Spartanburg Economic Futures Group, and the Spartanburg Convention and Visitors Bureau. Our mission is to build a vibrant Spartanburg through business, economic, and tourism development. Whether you're looking for business resources, economic expertise, tourism information, or for our community's next vision plan, One Spartanburg Inc where you'll find it. And I am personally grateful to our team members for bringing our new model from vision to reality. Every end marks a new beginning. And while we've reached the end of our annual celebration, our work as One Spartanburg Inc. has just begun. There's only one Spartanburg, and together we will see her rise.